James Ernest here, uh, part of the UC Bearcats on the Prowl with Alex Pace. Alex, uh, tell us what you've been up to. Hey, how you doing? Um, well, lately I've been training um, back in Cleveland at my hometown high school, just working out with a few guys who either, you know, who are in the league or, you know, or also have the same opportunities, you know, that I was blessed with to go to the league. So just been working out, working hard, just getting ready to go to camp. Excellent. So you're up there in Cleveland, like you said, uh, at um, the academy? Yeah, um, I'm at the academy, you know, get to speak to some of the kids, go back to Glenville High School and practice on the field that I got to play at when I was in high school. So, you know, just hanging around these guys. Excellent. Uh, so probably uh, benefiting both of you all, you for, you know, of course, you know, getting into shape and then them seeing what, you know, potentially they could be down the road and NFL hopeful. Yeah, most definitely. Just being able to get back to the same, you know, same community that I was in and, you know, guys that were before me that gave, gave, you know, gave back like Christian Bryan and, you know, Troy Smith and other Glenville players who went off to play in great places. Excellent. Uh, how are things going with Coach uh, again up there? Uh, things are going great with Coach Ginn. Um, every time I come up to the building, um, he has somebody come in and out of the building, you know, meet with the kids. Uh, the Browns was just here not too long ago. Um, I guess they helped fix up our football field. They, uh, you know, put new turf down, but he's busy as always trying to get kids into college, showing them the right path, showing them that, you know, you don't have to be on the streets, and just showing them that, there's, you know, you can choose other choices in life. So um, I hear you're going up to – oh, there's Mark. <laughs> Mark? Hey, what's up? Not too much. Just here with Alex Pace. He was uh, telling us about his uh, hometown in Cleveland and how he had uh, studied under uh, Ted Ginn Sr. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah, and he was about to tell us about uh, Seattle and how that – whole uh, process got started. So did uh, they contact you or you contact them? How did you, uh, how'd that get going? Um, I guess it started during um, pro day. I guess, you know, a few scouts, they got to watch film beforehand and everything. So after pro day was going on, um, right before I started doing position drills, they were doing um, offense and some of the linebacker drills. And, you know, a lot of guys were watching Gunner. Um, Eric and Mike Tyson and them, and I would sit on the sideline just waiting. And uh, a few scouts came up to me, they were like, hey, um, are you, you know, are you doing any drills? We want to make sure we get to see you do something. It just happened to be Seattle coach. And I'm like, yeah, I just waited for my opportunity. So I uh, did my drills afterwards. He talked to me and told me, like, yeah, we like your film. We like, you know, how you, you play, you know, aggressive. You stay low, um, body control, stuff like that. It was just like, you know, it was a great conversation. And I just thought it was like one of those things where, you know, multiple teams just tell you, you know, come and talk to you. But um, it was definitely something that was really interesting because my agent followed up with them afterwards. And they were definitely one of the teams. So, yeah, we, you know, things don't work out in the draft. He's definitely a person we want to bring in, you know, come in here and compete. I mean, and it kept to their word. So that's exactly why they're one of the teams I chose. I mean, they're the team I chose to go to for um, mini camp. So with that, um, are you excited that uh, you have a former teammate on uh, your new team? Oh, definitely. Um, Frank Clark who went up to Michigan. Me and him were really close. Um, even after you know we both went our separate ways, I went to Cincinnati. He went to Michigan. But yeah, just when he found out the news, he was excited. He reached out to me. I was just like, yeah, come home. Like it was already a home to me. But, you know, just can't wait to go out there and finally get to see him again after all this time. And, you know, you know, helps ease the process of going out somewhere new. That and, well, I mean, uh, Tyson also got uh, drafted there, what, the sixth round? Yep, Tyson too. So, yeah, so that's good, you know, some familiar faces, that kind of thing. So, I mean, even though it's on the other side of the country, it'll still feel like home, so that's good. Yeah, definitely. Actually, uh, I got to speak to one of your uh, former coaches today, uh, Coach Prunny. And, of course, uh, you know, his advice was, uh, you know, keep what you've been doing and, uh, you know, keep uh, God, of course, you know, in the forefront of, you know, your life. And uh, let's see what was the other one. Yeah, be yourself, trust in God, and uh, hard work. Those were the, 
the main things because I asked him, you know, shoot, uh, if he had any advice for you. And then, the, of course, the other big thing he was uh, talking about was uh, leverage. He was saying that uh, you tend to focus on uh, staying low. Is that true? Since you're not one of the taller defensive tackles? Sure, definitely. Um, you know, not a D tackles are like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, um, just guys that are really tall. So, I mean, me playing defensive tackle, you know, I'm only at 6'2", six, 6'1", six, once, you know, the NFL got done with me. But, like, um, yeah, just leverage is key, especially since, you know, everything is talking about being bigger and faster in the NFL. So a lot of guys, you know, I go against, even while I was in college, tend to be taller than me. And, I mean, there's no point in me standing up high and losing all my leverage and power. Why not, you know, use my, my height to my advantage? You know, I'm already low, so just stay low. That way I can get under blocks, play double teams better, and, you know, just, just take control of the game more in the trenches. The low man's win. And he also mentioned with your improved pass rush from your, you know, sophomore to senior year that there's a possibility you might play defensive end. Um, uh, probably. I know at the Seahawks, we uh, they do a lot of different formations where, you know, a lot of those guys move around. Um, you see Bennett sometimes at tackle. You see him at the nose. You see him at the end, like, just having those guys move around. So it all depends on, you know, where they wanted to see me at. But I know for sure they definitely like me. As of right now, they wanted to see me definitely as a first, second down player and playing a run. And they said, you know, I come out there, I'm in shape, I'm looking good. Definitely, you know, a third down possibility. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be nice with uh, having it uh, go into a team that focuses on defense as much as they are, are known for. I mean, they're basically the modern-day Bears, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, defense is huge out there. I mean, you know, they call themselves the Legion of Boom for a reason. They just they really focus on that. You know, guys like Richard Sherman, you know, Earl, uh, Earl and uh, Cam Chancellor, those guys, you know, who, who really fortified that defense and then it. You know, those guys, you know, bring something different to the table. They they didn't want to be like, you know, every other team out there in the country, you know. You know, main focus was offense, you know, let's, let's score more points. You know, the Seahawks still have a great offense, but their main focus is we're going to beat you up on defense. So what what gets your motor going on defense? What's what really? Um, what gets my motor going is just um, – I don't know. It's just like wanting to stop somebody from doing what they want to do. I, I mean, it's like kind of being a bully on the field. Like, um, just, you know, just going out there, you know, these guys got a purpose, you know, they got a mindset of like, oh, we have to get in this zone, you know, just me going out there, you know, stopping them from doing what they want to see, how frustrated they are, you know, really gets me going, really gets me, you know, keep wanting to go and just, you know, especially when we're like in the away game, just seeing the offense, being disappointed, living crowd, be disappointed or something that, you know, really hype me up, you know, cheers me to keep going on. Mark, uh, you got any questions? Well, uh, yeah, now, James, uh, I know I was late to the party, so you may have already uh, addressed this. Were there uh, other teams that had contacted you? Um, there were definitely other teams that contacted me. Um, early in the week before the draft, the Browns contacted me, the Cardinals, and a few other teams. But after the draft, um, it was mainly just the Seahawks, the Jaguars, okay. and one other team. But, I mean, as soon as the draft ended, the Seahawks called me up, and I was just like, I'm ready to go here. So every other team called afterwards, and it was just like, I'm already going here. Oh, cool. Very cool. And uh, and, and what's the timeline now for you? Uh, you know, uh, when you're heading out, and, and what are you going to be doing up until then, and all that fun stuff? Oh, well, right now I'm still training up at Glenville, and I'm leaving out, I think, on the 11th. I think we and Tyson leave out the same day, but I'm here in Cleveland, and I think he's back home in Virginia. So... We both leave out on the 11th. He might leave out a little earlier than me. But go out there on the 11th, we start rookie mini camp, um, and then go from there. Very cool. Very cool. You know, that's uh, – congratulations, man. You know, that's awesome that you're able to do that and that you're able to hook on with the Seahawks. And, and obviously, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Um, you know, looking back over your playing time uh, up to this point – was there uh, one coach who, who got in your head and made you believe in yourself that this was something that uh, that was attainable, that this was a dream that you could actually get a hold of? Um, I wouldn't say there was just one coach. Uh, there mm-hmm. was definitely at least two for sure. Um, 
The first coach will be Robert Prunty. Um, okay. After the transition, when Butch Jones left, um, I got injured. And, yeah. you know, I, I was down and out. And he was the one guy who had belief in me, even when I didn't have belief in myself. Because, you know, after you get injured, you're not around a team, you know, you're not mm-hmm. around everybody. You're down on your own. And he's one of the guys who saw me. It was like, hey, don't, you know, don't get down on yourself. You know, I know you can be a great player. Even when I wasn't playing, my red shirt, freshman, you know, which guys, you know, look forward to that year. I only mm-hmm. got to play like two or three games. But he was there in my corner. was like, hey, you can be a great player. I, I can see it. Um, and then the next year he became my defensive line coach after yeah. that. And then um, the other guy would be Coach Ingram. Um, from day one when he entered the, uh, the room at, uh, as a defensive tackle coach, I was just, you know, we was intrigued by him, like, by his faith and by his goal. Like, you know, coming before, we have a lot of guys from the D-line, like John Hughes and Derek mm-hmm. Wolf go to the NFL. You know, Walter Stewart would have went if he went for his neck injury. And But he was just like, you know, if you guys have that dream aspiration, like, I'm here to make that happen. Like, I was a guy who had a chance, but I cheated myself out of it by not working hard. So I'm not going to cheat you guys out of there by not pushing you to be better, not pushing you to get better. Is what, uh, which is one of the reasons why I think you've seen our D tackles play to a higher level in the last few years. I'm like, especially Cortez Broad and uh, Marquise Topol and um, Norman, Norman Oglesby and, and, you know, a few other guys that you're going to see coming up that you didn't get to see because they redshirted. But right. just know the guys are just waiting and hungry to get on the field. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you said, uh, you, you know, you're considered, I guess, a little undersized for a defensive tackle. Uh, and, and you use leverage. Uh, what what would you say is your best move? Um, my best move, I'm more of an old school player, would be a bull rush. So, like, a bull rush, okay. so like, uh, rip or a bull rush, snatch, pull. I'm more, like, I, I love watching, like, what you said, the 85 Bears. Um, mm-hmm. One of the teams I like to watch is you can just see how they dominate up front with their front seven. And if you look at those guys, those guys ain't doing anything to you with the stand or anything. They're just man on man. I'm gonna beat you. And the bull rush is one of those things I like. It's just it just shows like, hey, I'm just gonna overpower you. I'm gonna beat you with, you know, skill, talent, and leverage. Okay. Yeah, just walking back, man. You know, yeah. uh, sh- sh- show them who the man out of the two is. That's that's good. I like that. Um, but last qu- last question I I have right now. Um, what was pro day like, man? You know. Um, pro day was. Completely different, a whole other monster uh, I've never experienced. Um, this year we did pro day outside, which was completely different. Um, you know, just due to the bubble uh, schedule, but um, mm-hmm. it was definitely nerve wracking. I mean, I got the opportunity to go to a regional combine, so I had like a you know a small sample of where to be. But um, mm-hmm. pro day with all those scouts looking at you, all eyes on you. You know, you can hear. Uh, a pin drop on the field. That's how quiet it was out there, just, just really? watching them look at you and, you know, knowing that every little time, every little movement, every little, you know, how you carry yourself is them judging you to see if, you know, if you can be a guy that can help their program out. Okay. Now, now was it your coaches running the exercises or did they have some of the, the pro coaches uh, running it? Uh None of our coaches were there, but we got to see Luke Pickle. He didn't run anything, but he was a guy that definitely uh, inspired us on why he was out there. But everything was all pro coaches. So, like, I know for, like, Gunner, he had, like, the Rams, I guess, running his throwing drills and everything else. Um, Keon had, I think, maybe the Lions coach. Okay. I think helped him out, and we had the Bengals for the D-line. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, very good, man. That, that that's cool. You know, um, how's uh? And I know you've probably had limited uh, contact with him, but how, what's Coach Fickle like? I mean, have you gotten to talk with him at all, or or anything? Um, I've met Coach Fickle a couple times. He actually remembered me uh, during the recruiting process before I committed to UT. I was also getting recruited by Ohio State, and he was recruited okay. in that area. So me okay. and him, you know, went way back, even though I didn't go to Ohio State. He happened to remember me because of the tattoo on my arm, which, you know, from our high school, you know. And we were just talking about um, some of the guys, you know, some of the players that I knew at Ohio State. But he's he's a great coach. Just speaking to him that little time and seeing how how invested he is 
into Cincinnati, just changing the whole culture out there is just something amazing. I mean, just seeing the guys, how energetic they are, you know, ready to go to practice, especially those young guys who, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to motivate. But now these guys are just like, I can't wait to get out there. I can't wait to go practice for this guy. It's just seeing energy. You can see it in the city. You can see it in the fans. And there's something I look forward to seeing, you know, watching. As I, you know, I can try to continue my path and just watch me see grow. Very good. Very good. Uh, James, that, that's, uh, that's everything I had. Excellent. Um, yeah, you mentioned about Ohio State, you know, recruiting you, and obviously North Carolina, Syracuse, West Virginia. You had a lot of teams going after you. What ultimately uh, caused you to decide on UC? Um, a lot of guys would say the exact same thing. Um, it wasn't the coaching staff. Even though Bruce Jones was a great coach and he had a great coaching staff with Steve Strip and them, and it was the players. It was the city. Um, it was the fans. I came to the game where UC won a conference championship playing UConn in the Memphis City. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so I came to that game and I got to meet Silverberry in his uh, red shirt year. I got to meet Walt Stewart, and I got to meet uh, John Hughes, who's a good friend of mine now, and, you know, Derek Wolf. And just meeting those guys, being in the locker room for those guys, for those 48 hours I was there changed my whole life. Like, my mom knew it. Um, from the minute I was on campus, she was just like, you like this place, do And I was like, yeah, it's just something about this city. Yeah, we had Silverberry on the show before, a really great guy, excellent guest. Hopefully something ends up working out for him because I know at one point he was uh, considering Canada as an option. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think um, he... hello? Oh, I was going to say, I think he could do well up there. I mean, shoot, given the opportunity or that or arena. I was going to say, because unfortunately uh, the NFL hadn't worked out for him at this time, but you know, he's he's got talent. Yeah, Silver definitely has talent. I mean, um, injuries were hurting him the most. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I know it's right now he's he's really helping out his father, you know, in his family situation. He's been, you know, helping out his mother and father. He just moved to Chicago because um, his father had, a you know, an injury in the past. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's still trying to work through. And just Silver just has that, you know, selfless nature in him. He's just like, hey, you know, I'm going to postpone what I'm doing to help out my family. And that's one of the biggest things, you know, no one could ever, you know, talk bad about Silver because you can tell how much he gave what you can see what he did with this program. With uh, your time at UC, what was your favorite bowl game? Ooh, my favorite bowl game. It would definitely have to be the first bowl we went to when I was there, when we played Duke. Um, yeah, winning is always a good thing. Winning is definitely always a good thing. Um but it was just my first time even experience that, you know, a bowl game, even though we were going through a coaching change, we just met Coach Tubbs. Mm-hmm. It was just that, you know, demeanor of us like, hey, you know, even though we don't have our head man here, we're still going to go out there and lay everything on the line. Like, there was no slacking around. There was no playing around. Everyone was still serious, even after our head coach had left. And that – that's what I think really made that bowl game special and different than other ones, just because, you know, without the headpiece there, this team still ran like a well-oiled machine. It was still ready to go out there and fight to the last minute because, I mean, we didn't win that game by blowing them out. We won at the very last mm-hmm. minute on a fumble, which we recovered, yep. and then Travis Kelsey did his thing. Yeah. What was the best uh, swag you got at uh, a bowl game? Oh, ah. Uh, Best swag would definitely have to be the Hawaii Bowl game. Um, they gave us a, a lot of nice stuff, so like summer wear, um, some Oakley sunglasses, some nice swim trunks that I wear all the time. I go swim. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I was going to say, I know one of the guys got a, a three Xbox uh, One or Xbox 360 at one of them. They were saying. Yeah, um, the military bowl game, we got Xbox Ones from that uh, – from that bowl game, but it was a nice gift. I mean, a lot of people got to experience D.C. I didn't get to travel for that bowl game because I had surgery, so uh, I was going to the experience. But um, definitely, you know, Hawaii was really nice. Just first time going out there, even though I hate to fly. Um, <laughs> that that bowl game was amazing. It was worth the flight. Definitely, yeah, that does sound like that would be an I mean, amazing place to be at. 
Did you all get to uh, take in the sights or do any tours when you were out there? Um, definitely. Uh, for that bow game, we actually had a lot of free time, um, probably a little bit too much. But, um, yeah, we definitely got to explore a lot of the area. Um, you know, a lot of us, you know, follow Sione Tungamoa around because, you know, he's from um, the island of Hawaii, from Tungamoa. So he was explaining, you know, showing the sightseeing areas around from his culture. And we got to go to, like, you know, little areas that he knew about that, you know, tourists didn't know about. Um, but Sione showed us a good time out there, showing us his culture, showing us how they eat. And then, you know, we got to see Marcus Mario in high school and experience that. So it was a great time out there. Excellent. Um, Mark, uh, got any more questions? You know, um, I wanted to ask you another question about the Seahawks. Have you gotten to talk to Coach Carroll? Uh, I've not gotten to talk to Coach Carroll. I've just got to talk to the position coach. Um, position coach, yeah. Sports, yeah, just, you know, talk to those guys, you know, guys who, you know, really going to be uh, focused on me right now. You know, I still have to go in there and battle it out before, mm-hmm. I, you know, a little guy like me get to talk to the head man. But hopefully <laughs> I can go out there and turn some heads or, you know, I can get back to you guys. I'm like, yeah, I talked to Pete Carroll today. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, and what? who's, like, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. Who's the first player that you're going to see in the locker room and say, man, I am in an NFL locker room? Um, definitely Bennett. He's a guy who I wanted to compare myself to, for sure, just because, you know, going through this whole process, not knowing, you know, whether I get drafted or not, you know, Mm-hmm. I had my mindset if I didn't get drafted, I wanted to be exactly like that player. Didn't know, you know, if the Seahawks was going to take me. But just seeing that guy and knowing that he's Pro Bowl caliber and that he went against the odds of being undrafted and going on to, you know, Tampa Bay and, you know, eventually he ended up at the Seahawks is like mm-hmm. a guy I want to meet. It's like, wow, I'm really here with a guy who, you know, going through, who went through the same experience as I am and yeah. is now playing at this high level. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's uh... – De- definitely a good player to look to in your situation. You know, I think that's a that's a good guy. You know, uh, and, and hopefully you can have his success, man. That would be awesome. Definitely. Yeah, uh, James. That's that's everything for me, man. Excellent. Yeah, Alex. We are definitely glad that you uh, came on the show, and we look forward to uh, having you back on uh, closer to the start of the season and seeing you know just following up with you, seeing how things are going up there in Seattle. Uh, definitely. It was great talking to you guys. Yeah, man. Thank uh, you. Congrat- congratulations and best of luck, brother. All right. Thank you. God bless. You too. All right. So that went pretty well. Yeah, it was fun. Excellent. Your little guy feeling any better? Uh, yeah, he's he's all right. He's just he's got really bad allergies, and uh, it's it's making him sick. You know, like, uh, just can't get, uh, can't have a clear head. You know what I'm saying? Like, always stuffy and always, like, swallowing snot and all that crap. So he, but he's, he's doing, he's doing better. He's asleep now. So we're good. Excellent. Yeah, I was going to say, you're preaching to the choir with that one. Shoot, oh. uh, most of the people at this house have had pneumonia. And it's just been, oh, uh, with the sinuses. Brutal. Yeah, it's just why they're changing so dang much. I know. I know. It sucks, man. So. But, yeah, it sounds with uh, Alex's positive attitude, uh, he can go far up there in Seattle. I know, like you mentioned, Coach Prunny, um, because I had uh, talked to him before um, and had his contact info, so I called up and you're seeing, you know, if we had any advice for him. And uh, Coach, of course, is, you know, a big big fan of faith, and Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, he always uh, preaches that and just, you know, just keep working hard and keep doing the right things. And it sounds like Alex is definitely doing that by going back to his roots with uh, Coach Ginn. Um, yeah. Shoot, yeah. I was going to say, uh, what, I forgot to ask him uh, if uh, Teddy, uh, you know, his son does anything up there at the camps or anything like that. But oh, other yeah, than that, yeah, because yeah, I'm kind of curious what he's been up to. Because I think he's still playing in the league. I mean, he's, he's been yeah. in the league a while, but he just he one just of those signed guys. signed on with the Saints. Nice. I mean, he's just one of those guys that I think had probably been in the league 10, 12 years, but are just such good athletes. They, you know, they're going to find a spot for him. Yeah. Yep. So any uh, new UC news or anything else you've uh, been hearing? 
No, not really. You know, um, just, uh, you know, continuing to hear good things out of football, you know, uh, like Alex was saying, uh, you know, just a different attitude. And, uh, and man, that's what we need, you know, uh, with football. And then with basketball, they just signed that uh, – it's got a big six nine kid uh came in. I can't remember his name. Uh DRA or something is his last name. I think they just signed him a couple of days ago. So we oh, got nice. another uh another big man coming in. Uh so that'll help things out, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say and with uh losing a couple of the guys they did this year, I know that'll mm-hmm. definitely help out. And uh yeah, I mean it's nice to hear that uh the U C players are doing well getting into the NFL. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Mike Tyson uh, got knocked out in the sixth round uh, with Seattle. So you got the two of those guys going up to Seattle is always a good thing. Yeah. And then I want to say Minnesota picked up Eric uh, Wilson, the linebacker. Oh, okay, and, okay. Yeah, and I want to say the Colts have got Bond, the offensive tackle, or offensive oh, did guard. They? I forget. Yeah, and then the tight end as well. I forget the name of the tight end. I don't know if they're uh, – I think they were just signed to um, free agent contracts. I think the only yeah. one that was actually drafted was Mike Tyson. Right. He was the only one drafted, yeah. But on the bright side, I mean, shoot, that's five, six guys that have potential to be on an NFL roster. I mean, I know, uh, you know, for the season that they had on the field and all the troubles that they had off, that, you know, it's nice to see that, that there is some success and some light at the end of the tunnel for UC. Exactly. And, you know, I think, uh, who was I listening to? I think it was Lance McAllister uh, earlier this week or or maybe a couple days after the draft said the University of Cincinnati had as many players drafted as Georgia did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's saying something. Because, I mean, Georgia at one point this year was supposed to be huge, unfortunately. They also had a season that was a little down for them. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's that's nice to hear that they, uh, you know, they were getting the players into the NFL. Because, I mean, it's one of those things that once you uh, get it going, you get that farm system going, you're just going to keep getting the better players wanting to come play for you. Exactly. Exactly. Winning, you know, uh, helps a lot. It it breeds uh, more winning because then you're going to get the better recruits in because they see you all the time. and. And, you know, hopefully we're getting on that track again. Exactly. I mean, shoot, I think at this point, me and you could take over Alabama, and we were still going to automatically get four- and five-star recruits just because it oh. says Alabama, you know. Oh, hell um, yeah, man. And I would yeah. do it for a lot cheaper than Nick Saban does. Exactly, yeah. He just got a <laughs> big contract extension, and he got like a $4 million dollar signing bonus. Yeah, wow. I think he's there through 2021 or something, or yeah. 2025. It's but, man, yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, I know he does a great job and, you know, deserves it in some ways, but in some ways it's just like, when is enough money enough? Exactly. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, like they talk about how they pay the players in education. Well, you know what? Let's give him $4 million worth of education, and he yeah. can give it to whoever he wants. If he wants, you know, for Christmas this year, to give all his nieces and nephews scholarships, more there power to him. But, yeah, let's not give him $4 million in cash. He doesn't need no. it. He's good. No. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. Exactly. And I'm sure he donates to charities and things like that. So it's not, oh, yeah. And he's not doing good things with the money, but it's just like, wow, that is, that is substantial to be in the yeah. highest paid government employee in Alabama by mm, oh, yeah. percentage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, it sounds like the UC's got things going well. Any yes. uh, final thoughts? No, no. Just, uh, you know, let's, let's keep our uh, ears out for a little bit more information from the basketball team. I think, uh, you know, they, they might be able to see if they can get a couple more big guys in. be nice. And then also, uh, you know, Coach Fickle and the football team, let's keep that going. Seems like a positive, uh, they're on the positive track, and let's keep it going. Excellent. Yeah, I'll keep my ear out there for some of those players that um, signed with teams, and hopefully we can get the show just like uh, Alex. I mean, he was great, and Mm -hmm. hopefully he does well so we can have him back on the show again later this year be like, hey, you know, shoot uh, with being in Seattle. You know, how are, you know, playing against yeah. the Niners or Arizona, those type of things, and seeing how that's exactly. going. Exactly. 
Exactly. He's a good kid. I wish him all the luck in the world. He'll, uh, you know, as long as he continues to work hard, I think he's got a good future ahead of him. Well, for James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster, signing off for UC Bearcats on the Prowl, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network.